Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Go Blue with Stu. I am your host, Stuart Douglas, as always. With me is Tyler Aki, one of our producers. He's been on the show before, but Tyler, what's up, man? I appreciate you coming on. Of course. Anytime, Stu. Happy to do it. Love joining you. And I feel like, what, this is actually the second time we've ever spoken in person, I think? Yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. like, maybe this is third. There's probably like a technical difficulty somewhere along the way, too. It's mostly text. It's mostly. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's mostly like. Hey, Stu, like, are you going to record this week? I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm trying. I'm doing, I'm really trying to find people. But yeah, so we're going to, we're going to talk sports, sports. We're going to talk the tournament a little bit here. We opened up before the, before we hit record. Both of our, I mean, Virginia has already screwed me. San Diego State, just the debacle there already screwed one of your bets. I mean, we oh, always yeah. come into the opening day thinking like, you know what? Why not me this year? And it never is. Yes, this is the one. This is the one. Everyone yeah. thinks it had an in, but you're right. Like then you end up getting screwed. Um, you were talking a little bit about the bet I just had there, and I, I was on College of Charleston plus five and a half, and they come down, they're down four, they come down, miss a shot. Aztecs get the rebound. There's a foul with 0.3 seconds left. The horn went off, so everyone thought the game was over. I think I've won my bet. No, not the case. And the funniest part is is that the announcers are going. I think it's uh, Stan Van Gundy and and De- uh, Dan Bonner. And they're like, what are they doing? Why are they still playing this? Like, <laughs> There's no way you can get a six-point shot. There's no way you can get a four-point shot with 0.7 seconds left. But little do they know, there's this thing called gambling now in, the, in today's day and age yeah. of sports. Yeah, it's uh it's painful to say the least. College in college like end of game is so sporadic. Like yes. a kid will like a dumbass kid will just foul like that at the end because they're <laughs> angry like it's the end of the season. Right. In the NBA that's just not happening. Like yeah. Can, uh, now, well, here's know. the thing. I don't mind it in the tournament because you that that is your last game of the season. Like you might as well play for the one in a million chance of something stupid happening right yeah like who knows maybe you're maybe you're coming off of a like an l cut here and catch an elbow to the face somehow and 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 it turns into a flagrant foul and then you maybe find yourself having a chance somehow you never know no i don't mind in the in what's going to be your last game of the season that's fair it's very fair point yeah i'll never fault the players for it it's just like us expecting these things to happen in such a smooth way, how we picture them is just never going to be the case. Like Virginia, I didn't see it today. And I put a lot of things on Virginia. I'm in like one of these players brackets where you like pick um, six players and how many points they score at the tournament yeah. and the top guy wins. So I picked a Virginia guy. I'm like, they'll definitely go put them in my bracket, put money on them. And it immediately, I don't know how old is, I think it's key high Clark. I mean, yeah. must be like 26 at this point. Yeah. Throws him just <laughs> one of the dumbest passes I think I've ever seen. And yes. I know I, I don't want to get into hyperbole here. It was one of the dumbest passes I think I've yeah. literally ever seen. I think literally ever mm-hmm. in my entire life. And then they come down and that, that kid had some balls for Furman and hit a three. I mean, yeah. just stuff that you cannot plan for. It's it's unbelievable. I literally picked Virginia because they are experienced. That's literally the right. only yeah, and they're well coached. You've got a coach who's won a national championship, a point guard who's won a national championship, yes. and in a year where there's not a lot of great guards across college basketball, having someone with that level of experience at your point guard position, like, yeah, you could have seen Virginia making a deep run off of that alone, and they were dominating most of that game. Just a yeah. couple of sporadic runs from Furman, and, and that completely changed the tenor of the game. Yeah, it... it uh. It's odd. I, it might be something to be said there. I saw someone tweet about it. Might might be something to be said about Tony Bennett's coaching and what's going on there. Why are they so restricted with 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 their style of play offensively? I don't know. I haven't looked into it, but it is kind of odd that that these things would happen. I mean, I got to give credit to Furman, I guess, but for the love of God, Virginia, like <laughs> you got to be able to pull these games out. So I don't know. We're we're in for it. Um, the only thing I do know is. First half under. That's it. There you I go. Want to sh- I was just at a bar before coming over here to record with you. And shout out Ryan and Brennan. And it is. They were taking literally. They were taking all the first half unders. But I guess <laughs> the number is. I got it from my buddy today. Last year, it was any first half over under. If it was 65. If it was 65 or over. 
and you bet the under, he was 17 games over 500 last year in the tournament. Wow. And I was like, damn, that is a lot. So I hopped on it right away. Yeah. And, and overall, I think all the first half over unders at the time of this recording, it's like six and two or something like that, or about to be like, it's, it's a very good bet so far. So I'm going to keep it, keep that rolling. We may I've have to change the, we'll probably have to change the, the podcast name to, to go green with Stu. I mean, <laughs> we're handing out winners yeah, like we're that. It in. Yeah, yeah, I need some uh, bet rivers. Yeah, some money there. I need some free bets. <laughs> We're gonna have to get some some ad money there for sure. But yeah, that's the only. This is like the only. You hear all these all these bets, all this advice, right? It's like, uh, you know, follow me, or I'm on a heater. Like I've literally paid for. I tried it one time. I was like, all right, I'm gonna try it. I'll pay this guy for a subscription. We'll see what happens. He's on a mm-hmm. heater. I've followed him for like a month, and then he. <laughs> had a problem with his algorithm and went on just a complete losing streak. And I was like, all right, dude. And he knew me too. Like he was, he'd watched Michigan basketball before and he was a cool guy. And I can't remember like what our connection was. I don't know if I've ever met him before, but he was like, yeah, man, come along. It's been great. And then all of a sudden, boom, one month of, and he couldn't figure it out. And after a month of losing, it was like, Oh, some bug in the algorithm. I was like, I'm out. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> this is, this is impossible. But <laughs> bug in the algorithm. What are you dropping in water or something? Like you, you just got to put that shit in rice or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, something. I have no idea. You put a number in wrong, some stat in that you didn't want in there. I don't know how it works, but <laughs> it's a. Uh, it is funny to watch each year. All of your expectations just get thrown out the window. Yeah, and I want to transition into Big Ten play, and we'll talk about Michigan a little bit uh, with the NIT stuff and, and kind of the future of Michigan and your thoughts and all that. But Big Ten as a whole now is obviously the focus for the Midwest and Midwestern mm-hmm. basketball, college basketball fans. And Maryland had a big win over West Virginia. You know, mm-hmm. I had them. I thought they would win that game. Um, you know, we got, we got a few more Big Ten games today and then obviously tomorrow You know, at the time of this recording. But there's been a lot of talk about Big Ten's lack of success in the tournament. Mm-hmm. And I have my opinion on – certain aspects of it but if if you know if, do you have an opinion on yeah. that do you think it's just kind of randomness or do you do you have an opinion on on what the big 10 is doing compared to the national scene well i think it's because the league is largely predicated on bigs which is funny i'm talking with a guard right now right yeah like, yeah but but it, it's a league that you think about the last couple of years all the great bigs that have been through the league like it, before like this year it's Zach Eady and, and even Trace Jackson Davis and Hunter Dickinson the year before that it's Kofi Coburn like it's been yeah. a league that's just been reliant on its big men and that's not always the formula to win in March you need guard play and the guard play just hasn't been what it's been like in other conferences in my opinion because much of the regular season has been run through the bigs. It's been run through physicality. I mean, you look at that that Maryland and West Virginia game, you had all those guys following the entire game. Like, that. It, then it comes down to who's the best free throw shooting team when yeah. you've got guys following at that clip early on in that game. So I, I think that if there were better guards within the Big Ten spread across the league, you'd probably see a little bit more success. But to me, that's been the biggest glaring reason why the big 10 hasn't had their success over the course of the last couple of years. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of different styles and sometimes they clash in the way that that works out for the big 10. Like Hunter last year was just a huge problem for Colorado state Mm -hmm. um, and Tennessee just, they they couldn't handle him, and it was a huge problem for them. So it worked out there. I'll be interested to see how I think Edie's kind of an anomaly so big that it's going to be a problem for a lot of teams, but yeah, the guard play is a very different story. You know, Maryland, I was you know following Ant Wright on Twitter throughout the Maryland game because they were the first Big Ten team to play, and he was talking about how they couldn't handle the pressure early on, and I think they didn't score for like a field goal for like six or eight minutes or something. Yeah, crazy I mean West bet. Virginia was all over them; they yeah. jumped on them. Yeah, and you know Jameer Young is not a, a you know he's not a freshman; he's he's an right. he's senior. guard. Yeah, and they eventually figured it out and pulled out the win, but that is that's the case. Like, there's a lot of physicality in the Big Ten, or so they say. I'm, I kind of want to talk about mm-hmm. that here in a second. But they're not used to that pressure. Like, it's a lot of like, all right, we're going to play defense in the half court and kind of from the three-point line and in. Like, we're going to force you to hit some threes and contested threes. Like, we're not really pressuring out there deep. Um, And I think it's a problem. I think you can speed up Big Ten guards. And to your point, like, there's not too many great guards. That's why I think Penn State has a really good shot of making a sneaky run Mm -hmm. because 
Jalen is just a force. Like he is solid and he's going to have to have a bad game. I think for you, for Penn state to at least not be in it. Right. So, and the thing then, about Jalen is like, he impacts the game in so many other ways. He doesn't have to just score right. for them. He can right. go out there and be their leading rebounder. He can go out there and, and dish out seven to 10 assists as well. Like he's going to impact the game in so many different ways that, okay, maybe he's not knocking down shots, but he can still go out and win you a basketball game. And he's not bothered by it. Like pick him up no. 90 feet. He, he doesn't care. Like he's going to do the same exact thing. He's going to slow you down once he gets into the, to the backcourt. Um, and then post you up and then like that's it. You're just going to be, you know, as Brad Underwood says, booty ball. Like it's just going to yeah. be done. You're mm-hmm. in jail. You're in booty ball jail at that point. So <laughs> he doesn't get sped up. Um, you know, the thing with Purdue, which is now become cliche at this point, is young guards and their mm-hmm. problem. I think Braden Smith is is solid. Now, are, can you press somebody the entire time? You know, it's always easy to say like, right. all right, well, we're just going to press the entire game against the Big Ten. It's like, well, if you didn't press the whole year, like you're not going to start doing it now. Like, you can't just throw in a mm-hmm. press day one. So it all there is very much matchup dependent on who you're playing against. But I think that is a good point. Like with the guards and success, it's been up and down. Um, and, you know, it is curious where the Big Ten this year hasn't had great seeds in the in the tournament. But you got like IU, like Huchifino is an NBA player, and if he plays, you know. If he's scoring over 20, I'm giving them a really good shot of winning a lot of games. Yeah. Like he's and, a guy who's probably yeah. fringe lottery right now, but maybe yeah. a little he could be one of those guys like good turning run, maybe works himself top 12, top 10. Yeah. Yeah, big time. And and like him and Jalen. That's why I'm like Boo Booey is an experienced guard and he can mm-hmm. score and, and play solid um on both ends of the court. So it's like they don't have great seeds and they've been kind of down in the national scene in terms of like how well respected these teams are. But I feel like they're still very capable of making a run just like any other year. It, do, you, do you feel that at all? Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. I, I think each of them, like they all have their flaws. And I think this yeah. year, like everyone's got their flaws. And, and some of them are, are some off court flaws too, that, that some of these teams are dealing with at this point too. But um, like, I, I, do I think the big 10 is going to get a final four team this year? I'd, I'd probably lean no. Yeah. I don't have a ton of confidence in that, but it wouldn't shock me if some of these teams like Indiana, I think is a perfect example. The, the, like when Indiana is at their best, they're one of the top five, seven teams in the sport, but it's just, who's going to find that level of consistency. Can you put that level of consistency together for five straight games? And that's the thing with Indiana is like, they'll look great for three games and then they'll have one clunker and yeah. you can't have that one. You can have the one clunker in the regular season. You can't have it in this one and done tournament style format. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing that always worries me with a team like Indiana. And then you bring up the, the inexperience at guard with Purdue and like, they almost coughed that game up against Penn state in the big 10 championship oh, yeah. that, that came down to the wire. And we could have been looking at a changing of the guard at the one seed there in the final seconds of the big 10 championship. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to play college basketball pick'em, where you can get a little extra sweat during March Madness and win real cash prizes simply by picking player stats in this weekend's games. In pick'em, all you do is predict whether a player will go higher or lower on Underdog's projected totals, whether that's points, rebounds, whatever. For example, if you're like me and you think Zach Eady is going to go nuts in this tournament, pick higher on his points projection, add up to four more picks, and if you hit them all, you can win 20 times your money on a single game. Underdog's slick mobile app is easy enough that dummies like Jeff Goodman have even figured it out. So go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app and use the code Field F I E L D and Underdog will match your deposit up to a hundred bucks. Now is the time to get in on the madness. So remember, UnderdogFantasy.com promo code Field. Yeah, it's very fickle to say the least. And that's why I actually picked Northwestern Final Four in one of my brackets just to like <laughs> bullshit it. Just like, well, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Like, why the hell maybe, not? Yeah. yeah, we'll see if we'll. I'll, I'll win it if they do. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's um these predictions are pretty funny. That's why like I, I, I listen to sports radio and podcasts and I know I'm being um, a little ironic here saying like, 
you just can't predict it. Like, don't listen to anything. Like, trying to predict yeah. consistency in college kids is is impossible. It's absolutely impossible. You know, you had you have certain teams some years where you're like, they should just run at least get to the national mm-hmm. championship, and that happens. I don't think this year is one of those years. I mean, even I love Houston. I picked Houston for the last three years, and even they can just show up and be like, well, they didn't hit threes today, and that's what yeah. they rely on. So, I don't know. It's bizarre. I mean, I got Texas. My Texas guards, like, like go back to the guard standpoint. Mm-hmm. I think Texas is about as legit, and they're on a, a really consistent run right now, just beating yeah. the hell out of Kansas twice in the last three weeks, two or three weeks. Those, that's it, because they, they got like a guard coming off the bench. I think that's really solid. Yeah, and that's it. That's why I'm picking them, and I'm pretty much going to ride with that. I, I mean, well, I, I am. I do think bigs are going to be a problem guarding, like. Game planning for Zach Eady is much easier when you're in the Big Ten and you're facing him for the second time and you have all right. this body of work from other teams that play similar to you than it is for like Memphis to come out and play this 7-4 guy that can drop 40 on you. So I don't right. know. It's going to be interesting. But I, I mean, who, what teams do you do you like like that stick out to you from the get-go? Yeah, well, I certainly like Alabama and Houston, which I mean, no shocker. There. But you do like, like Alabama? I did like they they're going to have the most talented player on the floor every time they go out there. Yeah. And and I mean he I don't even think he scored a point today. <laughs> no. And they still yeah. blew the doors and again it's a 16 seed but you're scoring 96 points and you've got the number 1 college NBA prospect not scoring a single point for you in that game or or like barely contributing offensively in that yeah. game. Like that shows something to me. Um, I think Nate Oates is a really good coach too. I've liked him ever since he was at Buffalo. Um, and he's had some tournament success at both stops as well. So I, I think Alabama sort of has it, even though they are a little bit on the younger side, it's they've got like a different guy as their young stud. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yep. it feels like that Kevin Durant at Texas. It feels like that Carmelo Anthony at Syracuse type dude that can really be a, a major difference maker for you there. Um, another team I like, I, I do like UConn and Again, this may be like the the bigs are like it's it's what can the bigs do and, and what kind of run can they make? But they yeah. played some really good basketball down the stretch. And I think that they're going to have like I think Dan Hurley is a good coach as well, too. He's really sort of come into his own as a coach. So I've got uh, UConn as a team in my final four. And I mean, the way that Dukes played as well. To, to go out and win the ACC, like you can knock the ACC all you want for what they were as a conference this year. But we were saying the same things about the ACC last year. And my whole thing with Duke is at the beginning of the season, and this is the team that came in with the number one recruiting class in the country. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of their early struggles were because that number one rec- recruiting class, aside from Kyle Filipowski, was not playing like the number one recruiting class in the country. At this point in the season, that's exactly what they're playing like. They're playing like the number one recruiting class in the country, finally. And everything's sort of falling into place. You've got Jeremy Roach as a veteran point guard for your team. You've got a, a bunch of freshmen that are playing up to what they were built to be. And I think John Shire's done a hell of a job as well. So I think Duke could have the the run in them. And maybe it's not a sneaky run because they are big, bad Duke. But I think they've got the, the run in them this year as a five seed. Who's that two guard? Australian kid. Um Pro- is not Proctor. Yeah, right. He, Harry's Proctor, yeah. Yeah. He was struggling early on. I remember watching him. Mm-hmm. And they, they stuck with him. I'll give I'll give Shire credit there. They stuck yeah. with him. And I think he's pulled through huge at the end. I'm just such a big Duke hater. And I think my <laughs> So my, am I. Yeah. Are you? So yeah. So that that was hard for you. So you're so you you actually do will do it uh about as unbiased as possible. So I respect that. Yeah, I don't know. Can't I can't quite can't quite pick Duke. My wife did, and I was I was trying to trash her. I was trying to convince her not to do it, and she was <laughs> she was sticking with it. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, yeah, those are good teams. I I like UConn a lot. I got them in a couple of my Final Four brackets. Uh, like I said, Texas, Houston. I love both those teams. I like Baylor a little bit. I like their talent. But yeah, I, I'm interested to see overall what the Big Ten does. And the point that I wanted to make because I was driving over here. And listening to somebody on, the, I think a radio guy for Purdue, and he was on Indiana, you know, 1070 sports radio mm-hmm. over here in Indianapolis. They're talking about one of the biggest concerns for Purdue, whether it was like young guard play, refereeing, and then it was something else. And he, he immediately harped on uh, refereeing. 
and refereeing Big Ten as a whole and the physicality and refereeing a, a guy like Zach Eady. And it really pissed me off. And, and I'm getting really annoyed with it all the time, watching basketball in general. I go into the office. I talk to my friends. I talk to – well, my friends are pretty good. I talk to – like on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And the first thing people want to bring up after a game, like refs were terrible. Refs were terrible. Both sides say it. And it's like if that's the first thing you're saying, we're not on the – we're not talking – we're not having the same conversation. Because I want to talk about like how this team played. How they're being yeah. played, how they're being game planned against, how they're game planned against their team. The refs really have nothing to do with it. They'll have maybe a couple bad plays that'll that'll be glaring, sure at the end. That's all that always happens. Um, that's life. But unless you are literally tracking side by side who's getting more calls from the beginning of the game, you have no idea. You have zero. Yeah. You're just watching it from a bias standpoint. And the main point I want to get at is the Big Ten refs. Across the country, have ref refereed seven footers. They referee probably better athletes in other co- better, definitely better athletes in other conferences. More fast paced games. Some physicality is a little different. Fine, but it, like you, you're not going to act like a ref from the Big Twelve can't call a, a slap on the arm or a, right. a block charge. Like if anything, Big Ten the block charge is even wilder than it is across the country. So. It's it's really not a problem. I played it against other conferences with with refs from other conferences. It's never been a problem. Like you can't really sit there and be like, we got ten less calls. Like maybe one or two. That's just life. So I can't stand when we talk about the Big Ten and we use it as an excuse. One that we beat up on each other. I just I'm not really buying it the whole time. Like if if IU loses their game against Kent state and you were, and then they want to come back and be like, well, we just beat each other up in the big 10. You had a week, you had a full yeah. week and everyone's that's, healthy. That's the other thing too, that I, I think is so dumb. Like the whole cannibalization of, of the conference. Like stand. it's so dumb because you know, bad teams can cannibalize themselves too. Oh, right. Yeah. Like 100%. just because like there's this note, there's this notation that cannibalization means everyone's good. It can also mean everyone sucks too. Like yes. it, it, it works both ways. And I think yes. that I don't know why all of a sudden we, we think that just because we beat up on each other means that we're all good teams. It, it can be the other way. I want to make this point as well. Big 10 is pace wise is pretty slow. And I mean, it's probably average. It's nothing crazy. It's not like it's about average to the league. You like <laughs> boxing somebody out or like trying to play physical in the post. It's really not as taxing as like your actual movement across the court. You're sliding across the court. How often do you have to play defense in a stance? Like how many miles you're running that day? And some other teams, you know, will have a, a higher pace and then they'll still be the Big Ten teams. Like the Big Ten just beat each other up. And it's like that team's more tired. Those legs have seen a lot more action from the other team compared to that Big Ten team throughout the entire season and then the last two weeks. So it's just a weird conversation we have that like, it's, it's like this, it's like we like implant football ideology onto our Midwest mm-hmm. basketball. Yeah. And it's like, that's just doesn't happen. If you want to talk about injuries, sure. But like, where are the injuries? I mean, this year, Trace Jackson Davis had a back thing, but he's come back unbelievable since big 10 play started. Yeah. He seems great. Um, Jalen Hood Shafino has recovered from his back. He's looked great as of late. I mean, there's no injuries across the board in the Big Ten, and, and maybe you can go back other years and look at it, but I just don't see it. It's a weird narrative that we play in the Big Ten that really doesn't hold up to a magnifying glass, in my opinion. It's honestly the, like I, I love that you bring up the the football comparison too. Like we're getting a football label on our basketball comp like the fact that the big 10 punts a lot is now been like that label somehow gets translated over to basketball. It's yeah. stupid. It's dumb. It's archaic. Like just get rid of it. There's no yeah. point to have it. No, no. And it's constant. I think it's rampant. You know, somebody said, this is sports, right? Somebody says one thing has an opinion and all of a sudden it's going to trickle to the rest of us. And I think, I don't know if that's like the across the country, but I know growing up in Indiana, that is like the case in all walks of life. It's like yeah. some somebody says something and then the fear of God gets put into you that that might be true. And so then you start spreading those. I don't know. It's a it's a weird way to look at basketball. I even have like people that I played with and against and I played college basketball 
and they reiterate these same opinions and i'm like do you even are you even thinking like for like two seconds like <laughs> you play you know that's not true like what are you talking about right now um i don't know there there are some gripes i will say with the big 10 i i do agree that having the championship especially for like if you're gonna have like a big 10 team play in the play-in games on a tuesday like having the championship on a sunday is a little weird what iu did playing at not like they ended at what 10 or 11 30 or something like that on Friday in the big 10 tournament. And they turned around and played at one 30 um, on, on the following afternoon. That's just dumb. It's stupid. And I don't, I don't fully agree with that at all. Now I understand scheduling. It's a little tough, but if you want to gripe about that, fine, I'll gripe about that all day. If like an injury came from that, you'd have a very valid complaint, but the, the other stuff just seems a little odd when we're not winning. And it's like, why aren't we winning? It's, well, we need some more NBA guards in the Big Ten. I, I, I yeah. we need more injection of guard talent in the Big Ten as a whole. Right, like, like it was, it was a nice little change of pace last year when you had Jaden Ivey, and that's why yeah. Purdue made the the deepest run out of any team in, in the Big Ten last year. It was because there was an NBA caliber guard, and maybe they got a little too comfortable with themselves going up against a 15 seed last year, well, but. That that's me. Like that was the Big Ten's chance last year. Was with a guy like Ivy. Those guys don't come around very often in the Big Ten. Yeah, and he kind of boofed it. I think he was probably yeah. a huge reason. What I mean, he was jacking up threes. He could have gotten in the paint. So that was kind of on him. But uh, yeah, Big Ten. I'm actually I'm oddly hopeful. I think AJ Hogard and Tyson Walker still like their experience. If they can come through, all those guys are looking pretty good. Um, as a team, Northwestern, Boo Booey, like good guard play. They got some flaws they need to figure out. Um, I love, I love Jalen Pickett and Penn State right now. Mm-hmm. They're just on fire and just have a lot of confidence. And that's that's the tournament, right? You just run through five games and figure it out. Like it, it, you just have confidence and you can play well above your standards. Look at UNC and Caleb Love last year. Same thing. So yes. mm-hmm. we'll see. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to look how they clash and what their matchups are. And every year, it's it all depends on who you play. I'll, I, I'm i still – it's funny, this year I've been talking about the tournament and seeding. Um, we lost to Ohio. They were a 13 seed. Yeah, I can't remember what it was. 13 seed or they were 12, we were 5. I actually can't remember. But we got gypped one out of a seed. We, like, we should have been seeded one higher. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, they didn't respect our team enough for metrics. I'm not really sure, even though our adjusted Kempom was like number two in the nation or something, like something crazy. And we played Ohio. And Ohio was not – they were way better than their seed, or at least they just got out of run. And they challenged UNC that year. They almost got the Elite Eight. They almost – they challenged UNC big time. Then UNC went on to win the national championship. And I was like, if we would have faced like any other team or – had one better seed like these things they get so fickle and I I tried not to be bitter about them and I've I'm not actually like I don't hold on that resentment but it's so I honestly don't have like any pain about the NCAA tournament because experiencing it like it's so random and we've won games we weren't supposed to win and gotten close in games we weren't supposed to be close in then we lost a game we weren't supposed to lost and it's like to lose and so I don't know I just I think it's not as big of a deal as some of these things because it's so crazy. Like if we were to play yeah. a, a seven game series and like actually prove who's a better team, then I'd be pissed off if we lost that. But it's like, all right, well, we were just right. bad today. Move, move it along. Yeah, exactly. Like it's literally one of the most imperfect ways to crown a champion is a it one is, and done style is. 68 team format. It's imperfect, which is part, part of why we love it. Right. Oh, yeah. Because if, if these were all three, five, seven game series, like, all right, Furman had a great win today. Can you do it two, three more times? Probably not, right? Yeah. Like it would, it's the whole thing. Like you stretch out the game, the the talent eventually wins out. That's why they they are the favorites, and and it will bear itself out over the course of time. And that's why this tournament is so great, but it is also so cruel for teams like Virginia, like it was today. Yeah, yeah, it's frustrating as hell. Luckily, I've never had to like. I can't imagine being like the Virginia one seed a few years ago and losing to uh, yeah. um, the 16 UMBC. seed. Like, yeah. That would be so painful. And then and in the back of your mind as a player, like play them a hundred more times and we'll win a hundred games. 
Yeah. Maybe not true, but like that, you know, to live with that forever yeah. would be horrible. So I don't, I don't, I'm glad that I didn't have any of those situations because <laughs> good Lord, you can hold on to a lot of resentment, yeah. but um, yeah, it, it's a, uh, It'll be interesting to see how it breaks down. I want to get into some Michigan basketball here, though, for a few minutes. Kind of talk about narratives with Michigan basketball and Juwan mm-hmm. and, and what's going on there. I, I don't know if – did you see the Hunter video? I did not, know. Okay, so Hunter they, – they made the announcement of the NIT bracket, right, on Selection Sunday. and I, Okay, Hunter, yeah, I did see this, actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Recorded himself – and was super calm but like excited like seemed genuinely interested in it and Mm -hmm. you know i don't know with him if it's marketing anymore but he seemed interested and that first game against uh toledo he played hard and the whole team i I just really loved their response and i didn't expect anything less i love the response of being like i think Jawan, for optics sake is doing the right thing like we're young we're going to take this opportunity and cherish every moment we can have together and really build up this program. And we're not, you know, we're not better than, than this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's not the approach that North Carolina took, which like to a degree, I, I, I'm not upset with what North Carolina did. Like you're, you're entitled to, to view it however you want. Like at the end of the day, like, did you ever play in the NIT? No, we actually turned down the CBI my sophomore year. Okay. But like, and you thank God you you did. Yeah, it like, would have been. There's been very little brutal. motivation at that point in yeah. the season. It, it it feels like second semester senior. That's really yeah. what it feels like when yep. you get to that point. And and you get to those games. There's no motivation. That's why you see some of these mid major teams start to have a lot of success in those tournaments because that to them like they want to play in the NIT. Obviously, yep. the dreams to play in the NCAA tournament, but the NIT they don't view it as a consolation prize. Like it's not even a consolation prize for these power conference programs like Michigan, like North Carolina. So I I'm cool with them bowing out, but if you, if you want to play, sure, go for it. Like, yeah, I've got no problem with that either. No, definitely. I mean, Toledo was probably super amped up to have the opportunity to beat Michigan on their home Mm -hmm. court. Right. Uh, Michigan pulled it out, but yeah, I I don't, with all of UNC's experience and like all their, um, veteran guys like i don't blame them whatsoever for bowing out and and may sometimes you can get in a situation where you're like all right you guys can sit out and we'll play the freshman and we'll just keep going and build up the guys and optics wise i think at a unc you really i don't think you can do that it just looks weird and yeah I it's people uncomfortable and then when everyone's transferring the next day too like it, it oh, doesn't yeah. make a lot yeah no just no, get it, it over with start the off season yeah exactly yeah when you have issues like that then that that's a whole other thing um but I do want to talk about optics because somebody told me the other day that they think optics is super important with the with the Jet Howard situation, and he did not mm-hmm. play in the game mm-hmm. against Toledo in his ankle injury, the nagging ankle injury that he's had for a while now. And I think if an NCAA tournament game would have happened um, on that day, he would have been able to play. He would have fought through it. Yeah, and he was seen before the game, you know, shooting half court shots, and you know having fun being a kid out on a court and people didn't like it. People really didn't right. like it. And they thought like he was giving up on the team and then he wasn't taking it seriously. And it's it maybe, maybe he has given up on the team, which fine. If you're going to go to the NBA draft and you want to save yourself, I'm actually fine for that. But I mean, do you, do you have a problem? Let me ask you this. Do you find it important for optics sake? Like, for like Jawan's job to tell Jet like, okay, you're not playing, don't be seen, or do you think it's it's something that's actually not important and more just kind of chatter amongst fan bases? I think it's just chatter. Like eh, maybe it changes a little bit because it's a coach's son, right? Like mm. maybe that changes the conversation a little bit here, but yeah. I I don't think it should matter at all. Like if, to be a kid and screwing around, there's a lot worse things you could be doing than shooting half court shots in a, in a warm up, right. Or yeah. in a practice, like there's a lot worse ways that you can tank your draft stock. And that to me is not one of them. Um, I, I have no problem with, with him being around and, and not being like fully, like it's no different than when we see kids sit out bowl games, 
right? Yeah. The meaning, like you don't see a kid sit out the, the college football playoff, but you'll see a kid sit out for the, uh, whatever bowl, the, the credit union, whatever bowl, right? Mm-hmm. Like, You'll see that, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. You're focused on the larger goal at hand. You've accomplished what you've wanted to accomplish at school. I don't think it's anyone's dream to go out and win an NIT game, right? Yeah. It's someone's dream to go out and win NCAA tournament games. If you're not going to have that opportunity, well, then I have no – and you're n- you're not going to have that opportunity because you are going to go pro. Then I've got no problem with you getting to your next destination along the way. I've got no problem with how Michigan handled that. I, and I, I really do think it's just kind of gossip and chatter right there. It's, I think we're coming around as a whole, as a society, as like a sports society about those guys missing bowl games and people being more and more comfortable with it when it's not the national playoff. It does help that the national playoff game or um, national playoffs, uh, the playoffs in college football, English is hard, the, the playoffs <laughs> in college football now where the bowl games aren't as important. So for like yeah. a Michigan, when somebody would sit out a non-playoff bowl game, now they're like, yeah, we don't care. If it's not a playoff game, we don't yeah. care anyways. And I think... NIT, I don't know. It's still some of that crowd here with Jed. I, I could, I heard people talk about it. It's got a lot of tweets that like he doesn't care and he shouldn't be sitting out. I fully agree. Like Jed is pretty is gone. Like I'm pretty sure he's gone. And if you want yeah. to make sure that that ankle is fully rested, I'm all for it. Like if you know you're not coming back, fine. Like no harm, no foul. Let the other guys play and develop together. Yo Yo yeah. got minutes for the first time in a long time. That was awesome to see. Uh, Kobe and and Doug are still finding their chemistry together. I mean, Joe, Joey Baker went off. He almost got his career high in that game against Toledo. And he actually, I think I saw some rumor that he's um, looking to apply for another year, which would be yeah. mm-hmm. I think amazing. It'd be <laughs> unbelievable. And if he came back to Michigan, that would be amazing. Maybe he doesn't come back to Michigan, he goes somewhere else. But um, I think he could still be a valuable piece for them. So you're, you're still building something there. And, I'm not faulting the kid for sitting out. And it's funny, who knows? Maybe in like they make it to the championship and he's like, yeah, my ankle feels great. Like, let's play on this. And it's, you know, bigger yeah. national scene. I'm fine with them coming back. Like, yeah. I think they're just going to roll with the punches and keep going with it. Take it, 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 right? It's that fine line with these situations, which is very hard to do for fans. But it's like, <laughs> take it serious enough where you're working hard. But like, we're not taking it too seriously. We're not curing right. cancer here. Like, right. let's we're just, playing basketball. Let's just keep growing and moving forward, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, let's just play best some basketball. Yeah. No, I'm with you on all that. Like, I'm I'm glad we, we're getting to that point now where it's not a big deal. Like, these NITs, they don't – and ultimately, should these NIT uh, tournaments even be around for some of these power con- – I think it's better for some of these mid-major programs yeah. who go out and, and maybe win 25, 27 games – but don't find themselves into the NCAA tournament because something happens in the conference tournament. Like that's what this should be. It should be to reward the teams that actually had great seasons that maybe came up just a little bit short. Now you could also throw the shoe on the other foot here and say, damn, doesn't a team like Toledo, like don't some of those players want to say one day, like, yeah, we beat Michigan when I was at Toledo. Like, sure. There's that component too, but what version of Michigan are you getting? Are you getting a Michigan that's fully motivated and fully wants to go out and beat your ass? Or are you getting a, a version of Michigan that is sort of half-hearted out there and doesn't care as much? Yeah, it is definitely a give and take there. But with this young team, yeah, I don't know. It's fun. I'm having fun watching them. I'm fun, I'm excited to watch them against Vanderbilt um, and just see where this all goes. And, and again, in the college landscape, like we talked about predicting anything with – the tournament is impossible. And nowadays, like predicting who's going to come back next year is impossible. And we, you, I, I talked about it um, before with somebody basically saying like, you know, Luke, not making the tournament might be the best thing for this program because Hunter might come back and he might be a little more hungry. Kobe might come back and be a little mm-hmm. more hungry. Um, like th- they're more likely, you're more likely to come back. I think with the loss than they were like to, to make a run to the sweet 16, get in the tournament, make a run like they did last year and have some success and like guys leave again. Right. So, it's the college version of tanking, right? Yeah. You, we used to think there's no way to actually tank in college athletics, but now with NIL, a part of the formula too, this is almost the college version of tanking. And yeah, it Goodman may work for it some, out. it may work for some teams. Goodman tweeted out. He's like, it's unfair for a lot of these teams not in the tournament to get these transfers. It's like, no, 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 this is, this is the new tanking. Like you're <laughs> yeah. bad. And you're going to get the pick of the litter 
you know, for transfers right now, early access in the portal. So I don't know. Michigan's uh, um, been attacking that big guy for Wofford lately. Um, so we'll see what they do in the transfer portal. But it's going to be – yeah, it's funny. You <laughs> get tank now. It's all right, let's miss the tournament. We'll get some good transfer access early on uh, and see what happens next year. But that's the case, man. Like, they're going to have to find some guys. Michigan will. And so there's going to be a lot of news breaking here probably in the next few weeks. Uh, I can't imagine they're going to drag their feet on certain guys before the NCAA tournament ends. You know they want they want to get those picks in before their teams get um, a chance to finish the tournament and get get their in home visits and stuff like that. So it's going to be the wild wild west. And I think people don't like it because it's changed, but I think it's kind of fun. I the mean, drama's there. The drama's there. And the other part, which is hilarious, is it helps these mid major programs because what you're seeing now is kids being told, eighteen year old high school kids being told, like they're no longer getting that fourth scholarship, you know, in that freshman class, because it's like, Hey, we're not, we're not passing this out because we might have a transfer portal guy that yeah. we talked to last year. And like, he might come this year and he's 22 and he's ready to give us 12 points a game and five rebounds and three assists. Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. sorry, we're not going to give you an 18 year old kid who might need two years to develop. Like, so like, okay, mm-hmm. that kid goes to Toledo and he blows up like that point guard did at Toledo. He was unbelievable this year. And then maybe he'll take a step up and go to a better program. So it, it is a it's it's an interesting look that like now you have more of a pool of talent, in, you know, in the high school level at, at the at the freshman level for these mid majors, which makes it pretty exciting. It's it's changing everything, and it's bringing guys back for another year. It's keeping guys in college basketball a little longer with NIL. So I think it's actually giving fans everything that they thought they were going to lose right yeah i mean it it keeps familiarity within the sport and i think it it ultimately for the kids like it helps a lot too i think it when you when you talk about how they're given kind of this long runway now to develop as opposed to the pressure of all right if you can't figure it out in a matter of 25 30 games your nba dreams are are dashed and over yeah like the, i feel like there's some pressure and some relief on some of these kids now to to go out, go about it the long way, develop. I mean, we talked about Jaden Ivey earlier. He wasn't a one and done. He yeah. was a developmental guy who really kind of cut his teeth his freshman year. And then that sophomore year, boom, he explodes and all of a sudden becomes a top five pick. Yeah. Like some kids just need that. And I think it's going to be for the health of basketball as a sport in general, it's going to help a lot having some of these kids who like everyone talks about these kids that are just raw athletic, like, you're drafting guys who can jump high and and have long wingspans when, but can they play basketball? Right. It's one thing to measure out. It's another thing to actually be able to play basketball. I yeah. think you're going to see more basketball players come out as a result of this. And I think it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I, my one regret was like, I should have gone to a smaller school to like develop more of my game offensively. And these guys, you know, it's much easier to do it now. Like back then, I would have never thought about transferring because I couldn't imagine sitting out a year. That would have killed right. me. I would not have wanted to do that after playing so much my freshman year. So it's going to be fun to see the development and see NBA guys, you know, like a, a la Damian Lillard, um, CJ McCollum when he beat Duke in the tournament. Like you might see more and more of those guys pop up on mid-major teams. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun to watch. Um, yeah, and, and development is – the NBA is moving towards skill. Like, yeah, yeah athlete, athleticism is fantastic. And when you can couple those together, it's great. But skill and, like, learning, like, knowing how to win games is a lot more important than some guy jumping out of the gym anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I watched the Pacers. You got Tyrese Halliburton. And I think he can jump, and he, he's athletic yeah. in his own right. But, you know, you don't have to be Westbrook anymore. You don't have to look for that. Yeah. Like, it's just not a thing that they really worry about. So, yeah, it's uh, – let me look at Jokic. It's hilarious watching right, him play yeah. basketball. Yeah. Uh, and then B, like, just monsters that are just skilled. Now, Giannis is a different story. He's just an absolute – He's both, player. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it, it's – I think it's good. I think it's good for the game of basketball as a whole from, like, a development standpoint. Middle school kids have never been more skilled than they are right now. No, High school yeah. kids have never been more skilled than they are right now. I think college is getting there um, – and, and the NBA certainly has never been more skilled than it is right now. So it is fun that the transfer portal is keeping up with that and allowing college kids to 
also keep up with the other levels and in, in terms of skill development and let them find their place. I mean, shoot, we had we had high, we had I moved high schools. Kids move high schools all the time. Kids move professionally all the time. You move middle schools, you move AAU teams. Why why should mm-hmm. college be any different? So yeah. it's it's fun to see and it's giving everyone more opportunities, which you can't complain about. But that that about wraps up this episode. We're gonna watch uh, Michigan at Vanderbilt. I tried to convince my wife to go to, to Nashville, but it's a 12 o'clock tip. So probably oh. not going to work out for a road trip there, but <laughs> watch it on TV. Enjoy that. And we'll be back next week. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. As always, go rate and subscribe. Send, send me your questions on Twitter. I always love the banter, even though you might disagree with basically everything I'm saying on Michigan basketball. But I'm excited to watch them and really excited where this program is going. Tyler, I appreciate you. Uh, we'll be back next week, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>